Welcome, 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 everybody. This is Sunday, the 15th of January of 2023. I worry that in recent episodes, I might have said 2022 because I have definitely been having to go back and rewrite dates after I've been putting them places. Uh, my brain just hasn't made the switch yet. It's still stuck in 2022. This is the Sunday Snow with myself, Jimmy Snow, and I'm joined today once again by the illustrious Matt Dillahunty. Uh, I don't think I'm using that term correctly, but it sounds like a good one and a nice one. An industrious, the indu- I like that one more for you, actually. The industrious Matt Dillahunty. Uh, how are you doing, Matt? I, I am. Um, I'm okay. I'm, I'm fat. Down. Here's what I, t- I tell you what I, want, what I want more than anything. I'll tell you what I want what I really, really want. So tell me what you want, what you really, really want. I want theists to call in. I want the people who are in chat, who are saying anything, whatever it is. Like somebody was like, oh, being gay is a choice and therefore it's sin. Cool. That's an interesting, if absolutely absurd and and wrong and irrelevant notion. It's It's an interesting thing to actually have a conversation about. You can explain why you feel that way and what your justification is for that. And we can tell you why we don't agree. Um, Mm -hmm. And, and, and there's, there's potentially good, even some of the most awful positions, there can be good conversations, assuming that the person on each end are willing to actually talk about stuff. Let's define terms if we need to. Let's have a conversation. Let's, if you're asked a question, just answer that question. Don't answer the question that you think is coming next or down the road. Just go with it. It's really easy. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I totally agree. Uh, bit of a quick announcement, and then we're going to jump straight into calls. Very exciting Zoom meetup tonight with Matt and I. If you want to come and hang out with Matt and I on Zoom, we're doing that with all of our patrons. And also relevant, I'm currently growing this part of my beard out because we've got a ton of goals in 2023 for the line. And the number one way to hit that is to bulk up our Patreon numbers. We can actually get a lot done if we can rely on Patreon numbers, which don't uh, fluctuate as rapidly as YouTube numbers can fluctuate. So uh, basically, if we hit 250 patrons this month, I'm going to shave my head, or if people prefer, I'll let Matt shave my head. I'm going to shave the beard off down to a goatee, and then I'm going to figure out whatever Matt is going to wear to the Sunday show, and I'm going to wear the same outfit, and I will cosplay as this man uh, uh, I mean, for, I, for like a week. have to like, bleach out your goatee so that it is an appropriate color. A little bit wider. Yeah, 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 for sure. There's plenty of grays in here, but my grays go translucent. This part where it looks, there's actually like a lot of hair where I'm touching right now, but you can't see it. They're, they're basically see-through. Uh, it's so there you go. We're going to do this thing tonight. Yes. And this is going to be the, the fir- tonight's going to be the first attempt to build up the number of patrons. And by the way, there's a lot of good reasons for us to be doing the Patreon thing. It's not just, a, oh, here's another way to give us money. Yeah. It is, we need, we want there are people asking for podcast versions of this all the time, and it requires more than just making Jimmy do all the work and me showing up just to talk. Yeah. Yeah. I, I Yes. Please support. I need to hire more people. That's one of the big things. And, you know, on the list of other things we want to accomplish, but takes money in advance, uh, we would like to do line con. I don't know if it'll happen this year, but I think for sure by next year, uh, we have to build up something. I'd actually love to do it this year. If we rapidly build up enough people, we could do pull that off. But anyway, Patreon. Oh, Patreon.com slash call the line. The link's down in the description. And again, tonight at 7 p.m. CST. So that is roughly four hours from now. Matt and I will be Zooming with everybody who wants to come to our our patron Zoom thing. Basically, when this show is over, we're going to take a short break. And then we'll be doing that Zoom yeah. Patreon meetup. You're going to anyway. take a short break. I'm going to head to Orange Show. We're going to read the Book of Mormon for that break period. And then, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing about six hours straight of uh I'm, I'm cleaning a house for family to visit in between, so I don't really have any, any downtime. So. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, but I am ready to jump straight into calls otherwise. And we already have a theist caller lined up. I well, want to talk I'm to the so theist grateful. caller. I Thank will be on my bestest awesome talking behaviors it's true it's true and despite clips that people are watching this week of me i'm not going to yell at anybody unless charles calls back and does the same shit uh all right so let's talk to kevin in southern california kevin you are on the line hey kevin Uh, i'm so happy that that was a very uh funny joke (laughs) which one that i'm glad you're on your best behavior oh yeah 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 today (laughs) <laughs> I'm always on my best behavior. It's just some people bring out the worst in me. How you doing, Kevin? <laughs> I'm doing good. 
I'm glad you guys took the call. I called. I called early. Yep, that's the way to do it. Yep. What you want to? What did you want to uh, discuss? Explore? There's, ask? Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, potential topics just in the short notes that you added in there. Uh, let's pick one and start there, and then see where we go from there. I propose the Einstein one. Okay, yeah, that's what I was calling about last week. Um, sure. You know, it, Einstein is a uh, public figure that people study uh, at large and uh, or in mass, and he's so he's he's so well known. He's kind of he an was. archetype, and. He, Right. Well, I mean, yeah, people that talk about them, they often don't really do any research. Um, so that's a shame. And physics is obviously very hard to understand. But, you know, he got a lot right. He pushed the world forward. And that's uh, I think that's a part of why he comes up so much in this uh, in this debate. I, I, I don't know. I don't necessarily know that I agree. I think the reason Einstein is is often heralded as, oh, the the iconic genius. And so, you know, oh, if Einstein had some particular view, all of a sudden people would like, oh, now, now I'm just as smart as Einstein, which isn't remotely true. Some mm -hmm. of us are smarter. And people also, he's, he's also now overused just with complete lies of fucking stories that end with, and that man's name was Einstein. If it ends that way, it's almost certainly not true. So, so anyway, in any case, what did you what did you want to say about Einstein, Kevin? Well, you you're probably going to have a position about um, like did he really believe in a god? Because uh, that's what that's what people talk about all the time, you know. So here the two things are: one, what difference does it make whether or not Einstein believed in a god? And two, he's on record as saying that he believes in Spinoza's god, the the non personal non agent god of of the universe this is sort of um uh, the order in the universe and it, it's it, he's even quoted as saying that god is nothing more than the expression and product of human weakness blah 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 there's a lot of different quotes but at the end of the day here's the only thing that matters einstein and a bunch of other people may or may not have believed in a god what difference does that make to the issue of whether or not there is a god um, kind of like being torn in two directions here. Um, you know, the Spinoza thing, I wonder if, uh, that was, if he felt like he had to say that or okay, that was five, the, I don't, I, yeah, Kevin, on. Kevin, 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 but, I do not give no, a fuck about you speculating about what Einstein no, may or may not have felt like he had to say. I asked not. a very fucking specific question. Why can you not answer that one? Whether Einstein or anybody else in the history of the world believed in a god, what difference does that make to whether or not that god exists? Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. I just wanted to make sure I hit both points. Uh, the The reason I think that matters it's is because... the only because, point that matters. Okay, uh, the reason I think it matters is because um, when you when you study something like physics, which is uh, which has a lot to do with the fundamental... Uh, our fundamental no. understanding of reality. No, Kevin. Or when you when you study anything, really, you start to build an instinct for that, and people think that he may have had an instinct for Kevin. Uh, this topic. Kevin, I don't give a fuck about what people think. Does the fact that Einstein let's let's just assume for a second that Einstein specifically believed in Jesus, which is absolutely not true. Does Einstein, if Einstein believed in Jesus, does that tell us anything at all about whether or not it was reasonable to believe that Jesus existed? Uh, it, if, for some people, it will be. No, uh, no, 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 no. Reason does not work that way. It does not, something doesn't become reasonable for some fucking people. Here's a syllogism. Einstein believed there's a God. Therefore, what? Is it reasonable to believe that there's a God? Reason doesn't work that way, Kevin. Reason isn't subjective. Reason isn't, well, for some people it's reasonable. No, that's not what reason is. If we were to make an argument that included Einstein believed in God, therefore it's reasonable to believe in God, is there any way to make that syllogism sound? 
Uh, I just disagree that it's not reasonable. Like the thing, the reason I'm, is I'm sorry subjective. that you disagree, but that just means that you do not understand logic or reason, Kevin. You can disagree till we're, till you're blue in the face. But the fact of the matter is, a fallacy is a fucking fallacy is a fucking fallacy, and an appeal to an authority is a fallacy. Whether or not Einstein believed in God tells us nothing about whether or not a God existed. Just like whether or not I believe in a God tells us nothing about whether or not a God existed. It tells us about nothing about whether or not it's reasonable. Einstein is being used as a red herring to avoid people, to make people not use reason. And I'm sorry that you don't understand reason, Kevin, but you don't. Because logical fallacies are logical fallacies irrespective of the person, period. End of story. Is, na Logic. Name a person. Kevin, here, it's really easy. Let's assume that the question is, does Bigfoot exist? If Einstein believed that Bigfoot exists, would that give credence to the fact that Bigfoot existed? Well, they're kind of different. No, okay. no, 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 you wait, are wait, dishonest. No, no, no. Wait. You are dishonest as fuck. I just settled that right down the line to give you the absolute easiest way to get out of this. I, if I might, Kevin, do you believe black holes exist? Black holes, yes, I do. Why do you disagree with Einstein? He was a physicist, uh, one of the most I, brilliant physicists ever. It, within his area of expertise, why are you dis? How how could you, Kevin, have the audacity to disagree with somebody so brilliant as Einstein and say that black holes exist when he said materially they do not? Well, I think that. I, I don't think that he was 100% on that. I he said he is unconvinced it, that they exist, right. that it doesn't make sense. See, this is your thing right, where right. you speculate. You're going with, well, okay, here's the deal. I called in with, a, with a, an agenda. And when you ask like a perfectly valid question or make a perfectly valid point like Matt did about uh, he didn't, he said he believed in Espinosa's God. We take his word for it. And you're saying, well, I wonder if he had to say that back in the thirties and forties, where are you thinking it was more popular to be an atheist, even as a scientist back then, or, and, and so you didn't want to give away and you, and then you speculate, I don't actually care what your answer to that question is. Then you speculate with this. Well, I wonder whether or not you have built in your head, a thing where any good point you're going to radically speculate about, well, I don't know if he actually didn't believe, I, you know, yeah, he said he doesn't believe black holes exist and he has problems with the theory. Uh, and, you know, he he said he doesn't believe in God or he believes in Espinosa's God. But I wonder if that's really what he meant Spinoza, when he said not it. Espinosa. Sorry, Esp Spinoza's God. Yeah, you're right. Uh, uh, it, it, what What is the point in engaging with somebody like you who thinks your very poorly made points have this giant impact, but you think that actually saying what a person represent what a person said they represented and what they believe suddenly you're ready to to engage in basically a conspiracy that they're not telling the truth when they say the words they're saying what's the point here kevin no i i don't i don't like the dishonesty in the theist community around einstein and why are you doing it and then why are you doing it, and, then why are you doing but, it? I mean, that's part of why I wanted to ask your opinion because I, you know, I respect Oh, no, 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 no. You came I in. Am, I, I'm an so, atheist. I'm not an atheist, but uh, yeah. you guys are Here's the problem. Here's the problem. You, you need to study well, logic because you are very confused about logic and fallacies and reason. The fact of the matter is no individual, no individual's opinion about whether or not it's reasonable to believe a God is in and of itself confirmation that it is reasonable to believe in a god period that's just, that, that that's just not how it works would you say it, if someone feels they have a strong instinct about a specific god that they that it's reasonable to entertain what they're saying because they might be close no. at least temporarily i have no problem with entertaining <laughs> someone's someone's speculative uh, intuitions that has nothing to do entertaining a notion i entertain i've entertained this notion do. for 18 fucking years okay my issue here yeah, is construct a, construct a syllogism that includes einstein believed in a god that is valid and sound that leads to therefore it's reasonable to believe that a god exists yeah by the way i said no where matt said yes because matt i'll took give you a hundred dollars <laughs> if you can do that right now 
Matt took your words literally no, and I, I took them what I, you actually I, meant because he doesn't actually mean entertain. He means treat it as though it is potentially reasonable. So when somebody comes to me for the millionth time with psychics or uh, astrology, I'm ready to entertain them and listen to what they have to say. It does not mean I'm going to default to a position. I'm not going to open my mind up so much that my brain falls the fuck out. Go ahead, Kevin, prove your thing. Right. No, I, I, I really agree with what you're saying. I think, you know, most disagreements are misunderstandings and, um, yeah, I think it just makes people feel like they might be close when they're, uh, I don't the give a shit. This isn't the, this isn't it. This isn't the call and tell us why you think you might be close. This is demonstrate what you believe and why. Demonstrate that there is a God. Here, are there are there physicists out there that are smarter than Einstein, for example, Kevin? I, yeah, I believe so. Today, if I found one, if I found one that didn't believe in a God, what would that prove? It wouldn't. It wouldn't prove that there's a God or not a God. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And that's why Einstein, believing in a God, even though he didn't believe in a personal God, doesn't prove or disprove anything. So when I ask, what does, even if we granted that Einstein believed in a God, that tells us nothing about whether or not a God exists. It tells us nothing about whether or not a God, it's reasonable that God exists. So here's the question. Why bring up Einstein at all? If you cannot demonstrate that Einstein had a valid and sound argument for the existence of God, then all you're ever going to do is give what your opinion is about what Einstein's opinion is. Actually, it's going to be your opinion about what you think Einstein's opinion might have been, because he's not even here and here to defend it. So why mention him at all? Well, the last reason I would give would be because it inspires people to pursue education. Oh my fucking god! So it's not really related to. I, I'm sorry. I, I apologize, Kevin. I didn't realize we were doing the Sunday show on how to inspire people to seek an education. Have you been inspired to seek an education on logical fallacies yet? Because you're desperately lacking. If somebody is a strong theist, then that's a good thing for them to get into because it might help them to organize their thoughts. You know, it's, Kevin, it's a good I don't think I need a lecture on organizing thoughts from somebody who doesn't understand logical fallacies. And this isn't the how do we inspire people to do something that the caller's not willing to do. This is demonstrate that a God exists. Yeah, I get that. It's just, uh, you know, that that's just not specifically why I called. But I, maybe I call back and uh, I mean, I'm working on that. You know, it's it's just something well, that I want to be very confident before I present. Yeah, and and yeah, you, you, so, so why on earth would you bring up Einstein? It, it, if if we're both in agreement, if, if we're both in agreement that Einstein's opinion about a god, I'm sorry, what? It just comes up so often in the debate, and I'm really interested I, in an expert. Kevin, opinion. No Kevin, yes. Kevin, I didn't fucking ask people to call in to tell me what they think comes up often in a debate. You're a theist. I didn't ask you to come in and speculate about why other people might be bringing up these arguments. Your duty is to present your case. You're the one that brought up Einstein. Well, you know, to some extent, we've spoken about this before. My belief is irrational, but strongly held. So until I can get to a rational belief, I'm not going to convince you guys. So this is, I feel like you've just revealed your motivation. I feel like what you've just told us is, look, I'm not actually calling on behalf of the other people who maybe need to feel a little bit more coddled. I'm asking you to coddle me a little more. I'm asking you to, I have this irrational belief that I hold very strongly because I hold it strongly to, you know, back off a little bit and give me room for this call and show that you're calling us for. Uh, give me room to explore that. And we're here both saying we don't have such a low opinion of humanity that we have to coddle them. I'll tell you the path you're on. I feel like the path you're on uninterrupted in another year ends with, I don't really believe in God, but I think we probably should have religion for some people. Us elites don't need it, but these people who were too stupid to do what we did, because they're, they're, they're pretty tangential. It's, it's a, a, a rather an order of things that happen, and I feel like that's where you're headed. 
uh, I'm not going to coddle you or anybody else and go, yeah, 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 that belief that is not rooted in anything I can say is reliable, but I can point to tons of examples of where that same system is used to uh, prey on people, to take their money, to scam people. That's what I can point to the examples of, and I'm not going to back off again on a show where you call us about your beliefs and go, well, let me just, let me, let me bring you in nice and warm and shh, shh, yeah, that faith stuff, that's pretty reasonable. You probably remember that the first thing I asked you guys about was, I mean, can you agree that there are sects of uh, Islam and Christianity that are less vicious and you both. Kevin, you're breaking out. Right. You broke out you know, and you know, both. There, and I think there are going to be people. Wait, 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 Kevin, because I'm not going to let you also just leave that hanging because I do remember the call. We yeah. agreed that there are progress people who okay. perform their religion progressively and that we prefer those to people who don't and that they are a lower priority. Just As like in, there are different there are different cancers that are less damaging and less deadly. And yet all of them are fucking disgusting cancers that need to be eradicated. So, so I, you, this whole thing about, you know, oh, I, I have a village idiot that's not quite as stupid as some of the other village idiots. Okay, congratulations. Hmm. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I think that's just kind of an extreme opinion. That, I, mean, I don't you care. Don't I, I think that you avoid, I think that you have repeatedly avoided any recognition of what is and isn't a logical argument by, oh, it's, it's just an opinion, or I'm okay being irrational. Well, I'm not okay being irrational, and it's not just an opinion. The fact of the matter is, no religious claim, no supernatural claim, no God claim, I'm still fucking talking, has ever demonstrated any efficacy at all. And for people who care about the truth, to believe any of them is repugnant. Whether or not it, you believe in one that makes you generally nicer to people or donate to charity, or one that makes you hate gay people, that's important. There are certainly some that are more toxic than others. But my issue and the question here is, is it true? And every time you, you try to give your reason for truth and you get cornered and it gets demonstrated that you're presenting a fallacy, you then go either, well, that's just an extreme opinion, or it's irrational, but I deeply hold this belief. Um, do you care, Kevin, whether or not your beliefs are true? I do, but I, I know your, your I do, but of why, why is there a but? Why is there a but? Prove. Why is there a fucking but because after I do? You can't falsify atheism and you can't falsify Kevin, theism. So they're both Kevin, please irrational. stop talking as if you the understand these don't. fucking words when you don't. You can stop talking as if you understand these words when you don't. If you care about whether or not your beliefs are true, then you cannot, cannot believe theism. Atheism is not a proposition. It is not necessarily a positive proposition. It doesn't, it's, it's not, it, atheism is falsifiable. By, pr by providing a fucking God, by the way, it's instantly Literally. falsifiable. So when you say atheism isn't falsifiable, not only do you not understand atheism, but you don't understand falsifiability. I asked whether or not you cared if your beliefs are true, it. and you're, you're shut up, you're Kevin. Shut true. up and listen. I asked if you cared if your beliefs were true, and your response no, was to say, yeah. you. all right, I'm going to put your ass on mute. I asked you whether or not you cared if your beliefs were true, and your response was to suggest that atheism was unfalsifiable. I'm going to give you one last chance, Kevin. Is atheism unfalsifiable? It, it is in the sense that I'm talking about, yes. Then, then you are beyond stupid and beyond dishonest because atheism <laughs> is in fact <laughs> falsifiable, and I just told you how to fucking falsify it. Yeah, with word with wordplay. No, so, no, no, I mean, no, no, no. Here, you're, I'm muting you oh again. Oh my god! I did not use wordplay. Please take your fingers out of your ear, both metaphorically and physically, and listen to me. Even in the sense where atheism is the proposition, no God exists. That proposition is falsifiable by demonstrating that some God exists. The idea, the concept is by definition, in principle, falsifiable. 
just like saying there are no black swans is falsifiable by presenting a black swan. That is not wordplay. That is how logic works. What about that is confusing to you? I, yeah, no, I, you're right. You're right. Um, so is atheism I, I falsifiable? It's very difficult to find somebody who can do that. So I can't say for sure because Kevin, I don't know the nature of it. Kevin, oh I'm muting God. you again. This oh is so God. painful. I want to cry because I have what religion and is, is doing to your brain. This is really easy. You just acknowledge that atheism is in principle falsifiable. And yet, as soon as I let you start talking about it, you're like, yeah, but that's hard because it's going to be hard to find somebody. It doesn't matter how hard it is to find the black fucking swan. The issue is that the concept is in principle falsifiable because it could be the case. It may be the case that nobody ever falsifies something, but that doesn't change whether or not it is falsifiable. <laughs> falsifiable, not falsified, not being falsified. Right. Falsifiable. So I'm going to ask again. The strong atheist position that there is no God, is that falsifiable? We're not going to agree on this, Matt. I, goodbye, you, goodbye, I, Kevin. We, we goodbye, Kevin. Did. Goodbye, but, Kevin. Nah, we, you, already, you already said so. The fact that you're exposing how reluctant you are to have an open, honest conversation, uh, you should be fucking embarrassed. We already this was did simple. agree. You're, you're suggesting that God is not powerful enough to prevent being seen by humans. He may be in principle. Kevin, you're now muted again. What? You, sir, are a liar. Whatever's happened in your brain has prevented you from having an honest confirmation because I didn't say anything about God or what God can or cannot do. I specifically said the strong atheist proposition, the statement, there is no God, is falsifiable is that correct? And then I told you exactly how it was falsifiable, and I clarified the difference between falsifiability and whether or not something has been falsified or is, or is in the process of being falsified. And then when I asked you, is atheism, atheism then falsifiable, you accuse me of saying something about God. Kevin, can you address the, the, the issue here honestly, or do we need to just stop entirely? Is... Atheism uh, is atheism falsifiable. The, the way that you're putting things, it is. Goodbye, uh, goodbye, goodbye, sir. Goodbye, sir. There's one and only one correct answer, and that is yes. And anything else is you refusing to accept the very basic, simple aspects of reality. There, go, go talk to a theist. Go talk to to, to William Lane Craig or anybody else out there who's out there that you might respect and ask them, is atheism falsifiable? This is not a fucking trick question, people. It's, and he's the one who introduced the language. It's literally within the same context that he was trying to use the phrase, atheism is unfalsifiable. And what you expect in an argument when he said, no, and we said, no, you're wrong, and here's the real truth about here's the definition of falsifiable that you're just ignoring and then he agreed with it being falsifiable based on the actual things you said but then when you asked is it falsifiable well not with the not with the way you're saying so basically it isn't but, falsifiable uh, if you just change the definition to the way i feel in this moment and have nothing to do with i, I as he was talking i was thinking about how we often in calls will push a call along because we already know where the argument's going Kevin, never do a show where they're relying on you to do that because you do not know where the arguments are ever going. You've put words in Matt's mouth that he would never utter. Jesus Christ, Kevin. Holy crap. It, I, I'm, I, it's like I genuinely wanted to cry at one point. Do you yeah. know how frustrating it is to genuinely give a fuck about the truth and to understand these topics and then have someone come dancing in throwing around words as if they remotely fucking understand what they're talking about. They're, oh, well, here's what I think about Einstein. Okay, uh, it doesn't matter what Einstein thought. Einstein could have believed in a God, and that wouldn't change whether or not it's rational to believe in God. Also, Einstein could have been a vicious atheist, and it wouldn't have changed whether or not a God exists, whether yeah. or not it's reasonable to believe that God exists. This is really simple stuff. Argumentum ad populum. 
appeal to authority. These things are all fallacies, and it's straightforward and simple. It does, by the way, you can have an argument for God that is 100% fallacious, and that does not mean that God doesn't exist. That would be the fallacy fallacy. Merely because you presented a fallacious argument does not mean that that a God doesn't exist. But when you say, when you start talking about falsifiability, and then I explain what falsifiability is, and that all it means is that in principle, the proposition could be demonstrated to be false. Atheism is the falsifiable proposition. Theism is not. There's no way to falsify somewhere there's a God that's fucking hiding. Right. Right. An unfalsifiable God on purpose. Sorry if I just distracted you. We, we, we put the, nope. uh, because we don't, we don't answer super chats in this show. We dedicate it just to calls. This is just a Sunday show, but we do put $10 more super chats down at the bottom. I will say to the person who asked whether or not lotteries undermine determinism, they do not. Every lottery that we do actually does have physical Pro, like it's so say it's the one where it's the balls in the globe and they're blowing air around if you had a sophisticated enough machine that knew all the variables it could predict which numbers you're going to pull even random number oh. generators depend on some sort of light hitting something in space so no I, determinism when you, when is you, not when you said your initial sentence like do lotteries undermine determinism i was like what but the real question and, yeah. and this is the thing the real question this is why this is why sometimes it's difficult. The real question that was being asked is, is there anything that is truly random? Right. Let me give an example. How about a lottery? And the issue here is we don't know. Uh, I went over this with a, a physicist uh, uh, who wrote the textbook on quantum mechanics, specifically uh, asking, is it possible that there's nothing at all random and that all, everything that we would even look at as random um, is merely a pattern that we can't recognize? And he just looked at me and smiled and kind of nodded and he yeah. let me keep going. And I'm like, so I start explaining what I'm thinking going down this line because this isn't my field at all. And he's like, yeah, we don't know. Yeah. Is it? And, and so you talk about, com, you know, um, computer programmers. Um, we, we can't produce a real random number on a computer. All we can do is a pseudo random number. And that's why they'll use like, here's a really in, tense calculation based on the current clock time so that yeah. it's going to be different at different times. But that calculation is always going to come out exactly that at that clock time. Now, I know there's a mathematician who's getting ready to write in to say, we, oh, we've beat pseudo random in this sense. Yeah. And yet still, how do we demonstrate that it's not just a pattern that's beyond our ken? Um, yeah. Anyway. But we and a calls. lot of, I, I, well, the last point I, the bow I was going to put on it is the reason why people are mostly asking this question is they want to know if they have free will. And whether yeah. or not randomness exists in the universe, you have much less free will than you instinctually think you have. Uh, there's yes. a lot of stuff going on in the brain, and, and, and it's, it's a lot of chemistry. If there's any free will at all, it's very little. Um, but hey, we got, we got calls, and I got Tums, so I'm, I'm good. Gonna, I'm going to pick up CJ. If you'll let me start with CJ, because I just want to check something. Uh, CJ in Florida, you are on the line. Hello. Hello, CJ. How are you, Jimmy? I'm just fine. I'm waiting for you to talk to find out if the C stands for Charles. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Goodbye, bud. Hey, why? Why? Because you're a dishonest piece of shit. And you're wait, not going to call in and I, share. Uh, have you never done Charles? You have, I, I think. Know. Charles calls in, so he did it with Forrest and Aaron. And I'm not, honestly, man, like, I'm, I would rather okay. leave the line open for a better theist. He's just going to say, I'm about to tell you the proof. If you listen to the proof, I'm about to tell you. There are rules, and one day I'm going to reveal the rules to you. And when I reveal those rules to you, you'll fully understand, and you're going to believe in God one day. This is the famous clip that right now is uh, this week of me yelling at Charles to shut the fuck up and that we wouldn't unmute him until the bars on my sound meter stop. He was literally having things explained to him for minutes and wouldn't shut up for a second. He called in as CJ this time, despite the fact being called Charles every time prior, uh, because he didn't want me to know. Originally, he wouldn't tell the, the, the screener the topic. He actually told the screener, I'm the call Matt has been waiting for, which is I'm pretty sure is, he's done before and that you have met this guy. Uh, uh, and I told the screener, no, go and find out 
tell him he has to give a topic. He's 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 here to proselytize that he is a messiah. He is not going to share a single argument. Cool. Yeah, I can do it another time. Somebody in chat already said I'm completely wrong or I'm wrong about random in computers. There's special hardware that listen to true random transistor noise. The point is, how do you know it's true random? Right. We haven't been able to, you know. Right, anyway. exactly. It listens to true random transition noise. So tell me more about that noise. Where does it come from? There's, there's ones where they use like, uh, because they can't predict the amount of light that's coming from a specific sector of space, they can only measure it right now. Uh, they use yeah. things like that. And it's literally like, it's, it's way more random than we're capable of predicting, but it's, that doesn't make it, it sort of reminds me of the question of whether or not how improb improbable is life on earth. Well, a hundred, it's a hundred percent likely that life's going to be on earth because there's life on earth. But the people, the things people are asking is before life would have arised with our current methods of predictability, what would we have predicted at some other point? Kind of reminds me of that. Anyway, to that end, actually, uh, Jimon maybe is your name from Kansas City wants to talk about hard solipsism. Hey, how's it going, you guys? It's uh, Jimon, and how do I sound? I'm in a car right now. You sound like crap. Please pull over. I'm gonna I'm gonna put you in the back in the queue. We don't participate in any type of uh, driver distraction, so we'll take your call again in a few minutes if you have the ability to. To pull over, uh, unless you you can tell me now if you can pull over right now. Uh, if you give me about ten minutes, I can I can wait in the queue. We'll try after the next call, but yeah, definitely pull over. We don't we don't we don't do any of that, yeah, both for the I noise don't. and because we don't want to be responsible for someone dying. I love the call, but don't don't want people driving. Thanks. Exactly. Um, we're gonna try Elijah in California, who's calling about a Supreme Court case. Elijah, tell me you're not driving. I am not driving. Excellent. All right. Yay. Uh, hopefully you were telling the truth and not just because I said to tell me that. Go ahead and give us your proposition here. No, I'm, I'm pacing uh, in my garage right now. Sure. Um, it's nice to speak to both of you. Um, so this, uh, this I, uh, question doesn't have, isn't specific to the, the details of the Supreme Court case involving the the web designer in Colorado, I believe, who doesn't want to uh, make websites for gay weddings and stuff like that. Very similar to the the gay wedding cake um, court case. Um, but what I'm wondering about is that uh, these cases are um, being discussed uh, because the uh, the 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 group. Um, the LGBTQ community is a protected class, and cl those classes are, you know, race, religion, ethnicity, um, things like that. And so it, it's my understanding that religion uh, would be protected um, in the same way that the LGBTQ community is, um, we hope, is protected um, in their ability to uh, get goods and services, housing, and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm a, I'm a creative person. I'm a tattoo artist by trade, um, and I tattoo all kinds of uh, all genres of tattoos on people. Um, and I, you know, the the country is predominantly Christian, and so I tattoo Christian people. Uh, however, I'm I, I have the ability to do a beautiful portrait of Jesus. Um, I have the ability to uh, tattoo scripture verses, whatever a person wants. I don't particularly enjoy doing that type of work. Um, and so uh, my question is uh, kind of blurry, but is, is there something, uh, let's see, how do I say this? Uh, the, the difference between not serving a person because they are religious or because they are in the LGBTQ community um, and not wanting to produce content that, uh, that, uh, that deals with those things. And how, how do we decide the difference? And since the two of you are both creative um, people who produce content, um, 
you know, if somebody came to one of you and, and uh, if, I don't know if you do anything besides your own content, but if somebody came to you and wanted to pay you to write a, write a speech for a Christian preacher about how Christianity is the best thing for the United States and that, and writing speeches is something you do or producing a TV show or a podcast or something like that, would you be forced by these same laws that um, we're hoping would protect LGBTQ community, mm-hmm. the community, um, would you be forced to uh, engage in religious uh, creativity that you would prefer not to? And what do you guys think about that? Okay. So Hello? not a lawyer. Oh. Um, right. But if you're a baker, any cake that you would produce for a cishet couple, you could also produce for a gay couple. The production of the cake is essentially the same. They can't force you to say, to, to write, for example, gay sex is the best on a cake. They, they can't force okay. you to do that. And so if there's a piece of, Nobody can force you to create a particular piece of art that you don't want to create. Um, and not the least of which is that you could just keep doing shitty versions of it. So if I was a speech writer, um, I don't have to write a speech that advocates for Nazism or white supremacy. Um, I have to, if a, if a Nazi and a white supremacist comes to me and says, hey, we'd like you to write a speech, I... I have to, if I'm open to the public and, you know, they're a customer like any other, I can't refuse to write a speech for them just because they're a white supremacist. But that doesn't mean I have to write a white supremacist speech. So, you know, if, if the theist comes to you, and... if, if the theist comes to you Sorry. and wants a, a tattoo that you would put on anybody else, then, you know, you have to treat them the same as anybody else. Right. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's the, that's where the the creativity and the ability kind of thing come in. And one thing, just right off the bat, I I didn't use like white supremacy or, or Nazism or anything like that because, to my understanding, those are not protected classes. So white supremacy You're is not not, free not, not is. protected. Well, see, right, but a, I'm, but a white if you have a if you have a if you have a coffee shop. You can't refuse service to a white supremacist just because you know they're a white supremacist. Right, and right. This this is where, and I'm I'm definitely not arguing for a side. I was actually uh, this is just something that kind of like bubbles up in my brain every once in a while. I don't have uh, very many like-minded people uh, to who actually are knowledgeable in this to bounce it off of, and since. You at least rub shoulders with people who uh, deal with this kind of stuff uh, legally and stuff like that. I, you know, I, I would have loved to call on a day when an Andrew was on the on the line with you guys or something. But um, he'll be back. You should call. The it, they will be yeah, back. The, the, yeah, they'll be back. I, I, so here's the, a question. The, uh, the, right. What if somebody walked in and said? I want you to attach to First Peter three fifteen and the text on my arm. Would you do that? Absolutely. This this is a hypothetical yep. for me. Like I, 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 I don't. Um, uh, you know, there's things that I prefer to do and and don't prefer to do. Text is something that just technically, creatively, I'm not fond of tattooing, but I have the skill set to do it. And if if somebody comes along and wants to pay me to do it. Um, I'll do it. Uh, so this is more of a, a, a just kind of a hypothetical situation and wondering if if, say, the, the court case uh, boils down to this web designer must use their creative uh, talent to create websites for gay people that might have things like photos of the couple kissing and things like that, that that maybe a person has a, a problem with. Right. But um, you, they, it's not it's not. You're not creating the the photo of them. You're just creating a place for them to put their photos and the photos that they've given you. Well, well, the, the reason I asked about the I verse, mean, right. The reason I, I asked I, about I'm just, I, Yep, go ahead. 
the reason I asked about the verse is I could very easily get First Peter 3.15 tattooed on my arm uh, as an atheist. The reason why I might want a particular passage is going to be different. But to say, okay, I want you to create a, a picture of Jesus on the cross. Well, um, is it going to be, hey, I'd like you to create a picture of Jesus on the cross, upside down, on my back, um, with him fondling a butt plug? You know, at some point, the art that's created, you're going to be able to object to it for a lot of different reasons, irrespective of whether or not that person is a Christian or what they wanted. So that's not getting to the person. That's getting to what you're what you're willing to create. Like, I'm not, you know, you might, you might be like, oh, I'll never draw a picture of Muhammad. I did, but you don't have to. Right. So would, would you say then that, um, that, that, uh, that that wedding or that uh that website designer, if a gay couple came to them and wanted to uh, them to produce a, a a wedding register album memoir whatever website for their for their wedding and their their wedding was a BDSM wedding or something like that you know like these things exist um, and the the web designer would ha- say like I do these kind I do wedding websites all day long every day but i've never had to do one where the entire crowd is in you know pasties and and leather straps or whatever you know um uh, this is the 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 question between not doing something because a person is in a protected class and not wanting to engage with whatever that protected class um has uh, as their protected uh, right to do or or be or whatever. Um, it's just uh, interesting to me how because there's there's a lot of people that I listen to progressives and stuff like that who are, you know, really want and and, and I do too I guess really want this person to have their ass handed to them and be like, yeah, you have to service these uh, these people no matter whether you want to deal with them or not. And you have to use your creative abilities to do something that you feel is reprehensible. And if you don't do that, you can't have this business. And, and you know, a very vitriolic stance on this. And I just think, well, if Christians are protected in this same way, what, what would it take for a Christian to just go, you know what, I'm going to do this to another person so that I can flip this lawsuit and, you know, I can sue an atheist tattooer that doesn't want to do my Jesus quote. The atheist you know? tattooer would um, be smarter and not get sued by simply not giving the reason why they turned down the client, I would presume. Right. And this is this right. is where and like that, a lot of the nuances in these laws exist, too, where it's like m- most right. of it is that you can't be a douchebag. It's the same thing with firing. My friend was... Uh, I was about to say his name, but I won't. My friend was fired for being a trans man from a hospital in Wyoming. However, he wasn't actually given that reason when he was fired, and then there was nothing he could do about it. So there's still plenty of room for this bigotry to exist. It's very obvious, the the circumstances surrounding it, why that exists. And by the way, some of the stuff that you're saying, like, as far as these laws go, some of it conflicts with some of my own internal feelings. And I know Matt's expressed before that he likes for racists and sexists and bigots to be loud enough that we can identify them. And to some degree, I'm sitting here going like, if a person wants to take no sort of publicly subsidized money, you get no tax break, your existence is not in any way funded by the community surrounding you, which could include queer people, I'm almost tempted to let them be giant bigots and let their scarlet letters sort them out. Uh, uh, I, right. you know, I have the conflicting feelings while understanding the legal theory behind saying you can't do this, especially for broadcasted reasons. Uh, the cake owner who eventually did win his Supreme Court case and basically doesn't have to make custom cakes, a part of why he won was upon this basis of he offered them anything off the shelf he, they wanted, just that he wouldn't take them as a custom client but they could buy a pre-made cake or whatever else. Uh, uh, The issue starts to become when people actually start saying why they're being an asshole, admitting to their bigotry. Uh, And in the case of that, if you're an atheist tattoo artist and you don't want to take a client because they have a specifically religious thing that you think is harmful or broadcasting whatever else, 
your easiest way out, whether it's right or wrong, uh, is to just say, I'm not, I, I, I got to turn this one down. And if they say why, just be like, because I am. You, you don't have to give a reason. I don't like the way you smell. Right. <laughs> you don't have to give right. a reason, yeah, that, uh, <laughs> including smell. Right. Yeah, your, I mean, hygiene, your hygiene is too poor for me to sit here with my arm, <laughs> with my head tucked in your armpit for five hours. Right. I mean, I, and you know, I have a lot of my clients contact me via email, and if it's just something I don't want to do, oops, <laughs> yeah. you know, the yeah. the email doesn't get answered or whatever, you know. So, so there's, <laughs> yeah. I, I totally understand that too. I guess it's down to like being very nitpicky about what the law would say to a, a person um, yeah. who was, you know, and and I I think. Uh, I, I enjoyed talking to you guys about that and I appreciate your answers. Also just want to make it clear right off the bat. Everything I said here is like hypothetical. I am uh, not a, not bigoted towards any group or class and don't think that anybody that is should, um, you know, that that's not a business I would uh, frequent. Yeah. I, I'd say the more important thing is that, you know, as, Cookies just suggested talk to a lawyer, but by and large, it's this isn't about content. They can't they can't force you to create art or content that you don't want to create. Um, they can force you to take clients and to treat people equally. Um, if you if you have right. like a we don't serve white people, we don't serve Christians here, we don't serve Buddhists here. Um, okay, now you got an issue. Yeah. But you know if uh, for for tattoo artist, I mean, I've 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 got several. And I've watched some of my friends and it's just like, yeah, I'm not the right tattoo artist for you. I, but, but I want you to do right. it because you're so, no, no, no. I, you know, what you want done and the, where you want it done. Um, and even right down to, you know, your skin tone, I do black and gray and it doesn't work this way. Um, you know, nobody can compel you to do that. Okay, cool. I appreciate your answers, but yeah. Uh, that's that's how I felt, but I felt, but I thought that you know, there's either there there's something that I'm not seeing, or maybe there's the you know this scary slippery slope or something like that that I'm not quite aware of when I'm uh, when I'm you know full throatedly advocating for um, for LGBTQ people to be able to have uh, a website designer do a, a, a job for them, and then having it come whip back around on me and going, oh well, now this this has affected, you know, uh, affected me in a way. And how do I, um, how do I split those, those hairs and stuff? But, uh, I, I totally get the, the content versus person, uh, thing. And, and that's, that's the way I, I felt too. So I'm, I'm glad you guys think the same thing. Sure. Thanks, Elijah. Cool. Thank you so much. Absolutely. At first, when he said, uh, when he started to say, I just want to say everything I say on this call, I thought he was going to end it with, is off the record and privileged. I was gonna be like, that is not how this works, buddy. But that's just where my brain went because I watched too many legal shows. Uh, we do have some lines open, especially interested in talking to some theists. That number again is 720-619-2288, 720-619-2288. There is a link if you want to join using the web caller in the description. And a reminder uh, that you should follow on Patreon and join Matt and I tonight on Zoom at 7 p.m. Uh, CST. We will be Zooming with our patrons. Check that out. It'll be a good time. Matt, I think you have somebody you wanted to introduce. Well, we have a guest calling in. I'm going to let them introduce themselves because it's, it's uh, really cool for a, a different project. Um, oh, yeah. So, oh, I need to un unmute. It's, I don't know exactly how they want to be uh, introduced. So, welcome, guest. <laughs> hey. Um, thank you for having me on for just a minute or so. Um, yeah, my name tell is us what's Ashley. going on. Yeah. My name is Ashley. Um, I'm everything I go by apostate Ashley and I'm an ex evangelical pastor and a member of the clergy project. Nice. So I wanted to actually call to just talk about an event that is coming up kind of, it's actually one of the first events for the clergy project where a group of our ex clergies are coming together to form a panel to answer questions about when religious religious leaders become atheists. And 
if anybody who doesn't know what the clergy project is, it is just a nonprofit 501c3 that is specific for ex-pastors or ex-clergy or current clergy who no longer believe in anything of the supernatural. It's a discrete forum, online forum, and it's amazing. It's been one of the best things I've ever done for myself since leaving the church. So uh, I'm on the I'm on the board of the clergy project and pr- trying to promote this event that is on Saturday, January 28th from two to five Pacific time. It is in Vancouver at the UBC Robson square. Uh, that's U as an umbrella, B as in boy, C as in cat. And it's also available uh, through zoom for free. So it's in person. Dan Barker is going to be moderating it, and then we're going to have five of our clergy project members answering questions and talking about their life before when they were clergy and then their life after and why they've left. So uh, I, uh, the tiny URL that I made for it, just to find the Eventbrite real easy, is just tiny URL tinyurl.com backslash heathen event. And that's pretty much the gist of it. (laughs) But it is, uh, it's it's basically the Center for Inquiry in Canada and the Clergy Project coming together. And it is also co-sponsored by Freedom From Religion Foundation. Tremendous. Yep, we've got the, uh, the graphic that you sent up on the screen. Hopefully everybody can see that. Right. Oh, awesome. Oh, the flyer that I made? Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Good. We put that up. Yeah. So if anybody has any questions or any problems, you know, finding where the event is or anything like that, they can find me on any of the socials for under Apostate Ashley. And I really hope that we get some people coming and listening to some of our members because I think that they're going to have some really great stories. We have an ex-missionary, ex-pastor, ex-Muslim leader, um, an ex-Jewish rabbi, and another ex-pastor. So it's kind of a nice little smorgasbord. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like we've got uh, John Lombard, uh, Lon Ostrander, Mohammed Sisso. I can't quite read that, but it may just be Sisse. Uh, Shlomo Levin and Dwayne Grady. Yeah. And Very the cool. majority of those people are on the board of the clergy project. Lon is our president. Obviously, Dan Barker is one of the co-founders of the clergy project. What? And so it's just it's be awesome. Yeah, that sounds great. Well, I, I appreciate you letting us know about this and, and the chance to kind of to share this out. Um, that's January 28th. It's yep. a Saturday. It's available via Zoom. Everybody check out that tinyurl.com slash heathen event. Um, and you can get more information there. By the way, a number of my good friends have come from the Clergy Project. It's, it's something I've been uh, excited about and, and interested in promoting from the get-go. So by all means, while I won't be able to um, attend this one, I, I really hope you guys have a great event. Um, and uh, pass on my regards to Dan and everybody. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Well, thank you for letting me come on and talk about it. I really appreciate it. For sure. Thank you, Ashley. Absolutely. Thanks, Ashley. Just yell if you need us. Yeah, thanks. Okay, thanks. Let's see if if Jaimon was able to to park here. Jaimon, did you find his parking space? Yes. Excellent. Welcome. Got back on the road with it. Uh, you're breaking out a little bit. If you can go straight to the handset and put it against your ear, that's probably going to be our best way. No speaker or Bluetooth or anything like that. Is there now? Is this not, is not sounding any good? It sounds not great, but I, I, it sounds like it's, we can probably just have you pose your question because it sounds like it's probably pretty straightforward, and we'll just do with it what we can. Yes. So basically, I'm wondering, um, I'm trying to find out why, the, why people don't subscribe to the like solipsism more often. Um, this religion kind of fell apart for me. I didn't 
really want to subscribe to a god anymore but like i didn't know how to differentiate myself from a god because you know i'm real and to our knowledge we haven't found any existence of a god so um i'm not i don't subscribe to myself because i know it's unfalsifiable and you can't really prove it but i'm wondering why is it why isn't it more popular in the mainstream like community because it's unfalsifiable the problem of hard solipsism is one in philosophy where we cannot prove what the actual state of affairs is. How, how do I prove that I'm not the only mind in the universe um, and that I'm inventing all of this or that I'm experiencing the real reality? How do I prove I'm not a brain in a vat being fed information? Um, it's one of those things where because we don't have access at the level we would need in order to demonstrate what the truth is of this, there is no solution and no path to a solution. But uh, I don't know that even if we were able to, to solve hard solipsism one way or the other, I don't know what that would do for the question of whether or not there's a God. Uh, because if, let's say, let's say my mind is the only mind that actually exists. And, that, and so I'm not a brain in a vat being fed information. I am simply a mind and I am, some part of me is creating all of this that I experience. Well, for all intents and purposes, that would make me God. But it wouldn't mean there's a God beyond me, and it also wouldn't mean that there's a God in a classical sense of being able to do anything. It would be really confusing as to how I managed to create this reality where there are other people here who understand things that I don't, and they can teach me. That's really strange. But if I'm a brain in a vat being fed information, that still means that I don't then have access to the real reality, the ultimate reality, or even the next reality. I don't even know how you would do what would the ultimate be. So with no way to demonstrate whether or not a particular proposition is true or false, there's no, no one can have a rationally justified position with respect to that other than to say, I don't have a solution for that. I agree. And I think where I'm coming from is, I'm wondering why is it why is searching for a higher power outside of yourself more popular than finding that within yourself? Like maybe not finding it within yourself or believing I'm trying to find a way to word it, but like why is it you obviously can't prove there's a God and you obviously can't prove that you're a God, but you can prove that you're real and but you, you can't really do the same with God. So I feel like to me that makes hard solves more though? I would say reason. I feel like you're conflating hard solipsism with just the basic principle of solipsism, which the basic principle yeah, of maybe, solipsism okay, maybe, is that... I shouldn't put the hard... I shouldn't put the hard solipsism. Yeah. yeah, which it's two completely different conversations. The basic concept of solipsism is the only thing that I know is that I exist. That's the only thing I can claim to, to, to know exists is myself. Uh, and I think, I think that... I know religious people that I think accept that on its basic premise... Um, so as far as like just general solipsism, but it doesn't mean that you then conclude to therefore, because the only thing that I know is that I exist, therefore I accept that other people don't exist or that I am the only thing that exists. You, whatever experience the source of our experience is clearly we are having an experience, or at least I am of a society, uh, and other people. And, and there are consequences to our actions and stuff. So, uh, I, I think at the most basic, in its most basic form, most people are accepting of solipsism or at least in, entertaining of the basic principle that the only thing I can for sure know is that I exist. Uh, but then to draw any conclusion further than that is totally unreasonable. Got you. I, I, I know. I, I'm, I think the same thing about most, you know, religions. So, um, I don't know. I guess I was having trouble conflicting the two and figuring out why people choose to um, search for that higher power, like you know, in a god. And yeah. you know, conflation's a hell of an enemy fail. that that people are doing all the time, and they're fucking each other's lives up with it. This is one of the softer examples. But yeah, don't don't conflate general solipsism solipsism with hard solipsism, or colloquial solipsism with. Uh, philosophical solipsism because colloquial solipsism is just to call basically say you're a super selfish asshole, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, well, I try not to be that person, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you got to define your terms. Okay. That seems like the only problem you're running into there, Jaimon. Gotcha. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you guys for taking my call. That's all I kind of really wanted to ask. 
No, thank you. Sorry for the uh, issue earlier as well. No, nah, no worries. Nah, no worries. You took it in stride. We'll see ya. Uh, yep, see you guys. Yeah, and in fairness, I probably need to start using the term hard when I mean hard solipsism because I feel like I frequently just say you're just going to jump to solipsism when I say I don't believe in your religion. You don't think there's anything we should entertain in between the two of those where I talk about reasons why your religion might be wrong and you jump straight to, well, the entire universe might not even exist. And it's like that is an arrogant position, a tremendously arrogant position of the moment you question my beliefs, I jump all the way to an extreme of not, I could be wrong about this and maybe some other truth that's more easily obtainable and identifiable could be correct. You jump all the way to, well, the whole universe might be a brain in a vat, which I don't even know if it might be that. I've never, I've never seen a demonstration that brains and vats are uh, possible. So I, I don't hold the position that it could be that because it's, I've never been shown that that's a possibility. Uh, yeah, despite, it's, I mean, th there's, a lot of issues in philosophy that, you know, I don't have any real interest in. Solipsism is one of those things where well, I think I have at least a low level solution. There is no high level solution, just like there's no way to demonstrate identity, non-contradiction, excluded middle or inviolate, inviolate in, the, in the sense that we do, we're not going to have access to everything. I can't possibly know everything. But if in fact I was um, it, it, pure solipsism were the case where I was the only mind. That would mean that I wrote every great song and every terrible song. And it would mean that I've been every good caller and every terrible caller to every show over the last 18 years. And it would mean that I both, uh, that, that I taught myself everything that I didn't know, even though I can demonstrate that there were people who apparently knew and understood it before I did, you know, my, you know, you knew, you knew a piece of information, um, before I did. And so in order for solipsism to be the case, that would mean that I intentionally created Jimmy and I gave him a piece of information that I somehow managed to hide from me just so that Jimmy would give me that information. Uh, I, I find that to be beyond preposterous and that it is uh, simpler, more parsimonious to just accept that Jimmy's a real person sharing a reality with me. Plus, I like that better because then that means that whatever I learn from Jimmy is something genuine and not just me fucking with myself. Yeah. Yeah. Though I've told the story many times about getting super high and having solipsistic crises of like, I'll start studying astrophysics on just on Google. When I say studying, I mean it very colloquially. And, and then having this crisis of like, what if I hit a point where I can't find an explanation for something and my failure to find that explanation destroys the universe? That's a type of high that I suggest everybody get at least once in their life. It's, wow. <laughs> it's, it's a good high. You know, is it really that much of a loss if you created the universe to begin with? I, clearly, I want to experience some type of universe, I, I, if that is the case. And that's what you I'm just doing. Make a new one. Yeah. Make a new one. That's, that's the whole game. The game is you're creating universes until you, your brain decide, figures out that you created it. So you're trying to constantly fool yourself and then you just start all over again. Yeah. It's look, like you're he, you're he who remains. It, and then there's TV shows that'll give you suggestions. I don't believe in an afterlife, but will I be thrilled if when I die, I'm taking off a VR headset and suddenly remembering that I'm in a video game and that this was just my episode of Roy or my, my game of Roy. That's a reference that Matt doesn't watch Rick and Morty, but uh, Correct. Uh, yeah, it's, there's a video game called like Roy. To. I would very much like to watch Rick and Morty. I've watched like one episode yeah. and I think it's a show that I would very much like. One of my favorite quotes from anyone ever is um, if someone tells you that uh, they really like Rick and Morty, they're probably very cool. Yeah. And if someone tells you that Rick and Morty is their favorite show, run for the hills. They're probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the 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 fan base of Rick and Morty is what ruins Rick and Morty for sure. There's a video game in it. This is a this isn't a spoiler because it's more of a device. But there's a video game in it where you literally live an entire other life, and it's like VR, and it 
it goes into your brain and and it's called Roy and you play as this guy Roy who owns a carpet store and you live his whole life in just a short period of time from where you physically are but you experience the whole thing yeah, it's a it's a it's trippy very trippy anyway sweet we've got full lines and I shouldn't have I shouldn't have gone off on that tangent uh let's jump in with um I'm kind of interested to talk to David. Now, David, you gave unique pronouns, what, whatever, whichsoever. Uh, I'd love to start by asking David about your gender identity, if you want to share that with us and, and explain to us uh, what, where these pronouns come from, what, what, what we should associate that with. Uh, you can't associate with that, that with anything other than uh, mental illness. Uh, oh, got it. So you were just being it. an asshole. No, I'm mentally ill. Oh, I see. So you're saying you have what's uh, whatever and which soever as your pronouns, and these are genuinely the pronouns you use day to day, and you would like these not associated with a gender identity but a mental illness? Well, that's what I associate it with. Uh, are these genuinely the pronouns you use day to day? I don't use pronouns. I... I don't talk you just to said, I don't much. use pronouns, which was the first thing you said. I don't use pronouns. You began with the pronoun I and then said, don't use pronouns. A self-defeating yeah, statement. Yeah, but I didn't talk about pronouns. No, well, you gave, a, you, gave our, you gave our screener some unique ones, you may, you're, and, and, and these are very <laughs> unique, and I want to know which, what to associate them with. In, in, if somebody calls in with I, tear tear, I like to hear about you. their... I, it sounds I like you, what you told you me is that these you aren't your real pronouns. Those with mental illness. Are these your real pronouns? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I, I just want to talk I, about I what I, I don't want to talk about. No, no, no. David, uh, David, I don't understand what you mean when you say you can associate these with mental illness. What does that mean? Well, that's the whole thing that revolves around what my pronouns are is associated with mental illness. No, we pronouns are words. There's, pro, there's pretty obvious. Stop, there's only David, male David, pronouns David, and female David, pronouns. David, <laughs> David, David. Um, the issue here is that I'm, I'm trying to understand what it is that you're saying, and are you in fact saying that you don't think pronouns are real? Well, I don't know why you want to talk about gender because I. I didn't mention David, anything about gender. David, David, I'm trying to understand <laughs> what your point is. What, what, when someone asks you what your pronouns are, you said your pronouns are whatever, whichsoever. And then when we asked about it, you said that we should associate that with mental illness. What particular mental illness do you have that we should then associate those pronouns with? I'm a liberal. <laughs> you're fucking okay. what uh, a douchebag you are you are a lying piece of shit douche nozzle and we're going to say goodbye to you now hey that's because you don't want to talk about your faith <laughs> no it's because it's because i don't want to talk to lying douche nozzles du yeah yeah fucking asshole oh my god i i just knew looking at it because it's one of those things if a person had called in now i will tell you uh i didn't put it on the screen they also, uh, uh, and I'm going to use they as the neutral pronoun because I don't know David's pronouns. Uh, they also used it, uh, and they wanted whichsoever, whatsoever, and it. It being, uh, when coming from a non-trans person, a trans slur, there are trans people out there who are reclaiming it. And as I've explained to people who have called in wanting to use those pronouns, we're not trans. Uh, we are not part of the community which has the ability to reclaim. So, for example, that's one of the tough ones because it's a pronoun. It's literally about how other people refer to you. But in the same way that I can't participate in uh, black people taking back slurs that are for black people because I am not a black person, I can't take back a trans slur as a cis person. But I knew looking at the call. And it's funny when it's like, I didn't want to talk about this. Then why did you give a stupid answer? Not just a, not just like a, I don't do pronouns, which we would have put on and just been like fine and moved on. You gave a parody answer. You were yeah. making a point. You presumably watched the show, knew they would go on the screen. You're saying you don't want to talk about the point that was the first one you decided to make. And at that and point, it, it, I said, really, yourself. 
Yeah, it's, it's really frustrating because I'm going to genuinely try to understand what points. And, and if you, here's the thing. If you would like to call in and say liberalism is mental illness and that's your topic that you'd like to talk about, I would imagine <laughs> we would take the call if for no other reason than to allow you to look incredibly stupid publicly. Because yeah. uh, it's, it, you know, pull up your DSM and show me where liberalism is in there. Um, you're, you're, you're doing more to expose yourself than anything. But when you do it in this sense to where we're, we're asking you the very questions that are going to lead to you being able to say the shitty thing that you want to say. Yeah. And then you, you try and dodge it as if, oh, I don't want to do that. I, why are you guys so obsessed about pronouns? We asked for your pronouns. You gave us those. We're right. trying to understand it. You know, you know, oh, I don't use pronouns. Yes, you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You absolutely did. Yeah, and you're like, a liar. Kind of like you were saying, we would have taken any of the points you were trying to make if you were just making the points and, and engage yeah. them. You were we trying to do your little fucky show. We might have preferred that you call in on like Wednesday night for the Wednesday night show because the Sunday show tends to be more about religion stuff. Sure. But, yeah, yeah, that's true. We got, we got another theist, so let's, let's, get, let's keep going. Let's Mark, not be disrespectful to people who might actually be calling in. We like Mark. Mark's nice. Mark's a nice How guy. Doing, How are we doing, Mark? Hey, guys. How you doing? Not bad, man. How's the year going? It says here, it says here on the call screener thing that you're, you're saying God is the best explanation for a wide range of data we experience. What, which God? What are the characteristics of God that make it an explanation? Because I'll tell you from the start, I'm not aware of any... God hypothesis that can serve as an explanation for anything because we explain things in terms of other things that we understand. Yeah. And you can't solve a mystery by appealing to a bigger mystery. So I'm going to need you to tell me what are the characteristics of this God and how is that an explanation for which data? All yours. Okay, so just so I could follow your line of reasoning, Matt, you're saying you cannot explain something by reference to an unknown? An unknown cause? An unknown doesn't explain anything. It can be a stopgap saying, okay, hey, why, why when I let go of this pen does it drop down? And somebody can say, oh, that's gravity. And you can say, well, what's gravity? And he's like, I don't understand it, but that's what the cause is. The, the, that's not going to do much good because an explanation edifies. It, it clarifies. And so if you say it's magic, that's not an explanation. That's an appeal to something that's unknown. So I need to know which God are you talking about, which data do you do, needs an explanation, and how how this God expands our understanding of that. So I am using God as a metaphysical hypothesis um, for a, a variety of data. I mean, fundamentally, it personally I, okay. it's grounded. Mark Just give it. I, 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 I'm going to give you time, but I'm going to tell you, you've already monumentally stepped into it. Yeah. Because I asked for a God, and I want to know the characteristics of this God and how it's going to explain data. And when you start off with a sentence that says, I mean, by God, I mean a metaphysical hypothesis. A hypothesis is a proposed explanation. An hypothesis is not an explanation. And a hypothesis that has actually been tested and demonstrated becomes a theory. So I'm not interested in a hypothesis, but if you want to present a hypothesis, you have to start by defining God not as a metaphysical hypothesis, but in, in the sense of giving me the characteristics of that God. Because saying it's a metaphysical hypothesis is like circular. You're saying, I'm going to present a hypothesis right. to explain data, and I'm going to call God that hypothesis. You haven't, you, here's my, my problem. The point of explaining something is that it edifies and increases our understanding. And already, even when I've given you that warning and given you the opportunity to, to edify us with regard to your God, all you did was present gobbledygook that God is a metaphysical hypothesis. Yes, we're aware that you would like to use this God as a hypothesis. What are the characteristics of this God? I'll take us off speakerphone before you respond, if you don't mind. Okay. 
No, fair enough. I, I get you want you want some characteristics. Um, I would say it is a immaterial personal creator of the universe. That that would sort of be like at a high level, and um, th- and, the, and the reason I'm I'm not, I'm not trying to uh, uh, what's the word uh, the reason I'm, I'm, I I could I think I could defend the hypothesis on, on several different levels. There's, there's more sort of like the philosophical concept of God, and then the religious concept. Uh, I think, Mark, here's what's disappointing I, to me. The first time you called me was like, what, a month and a half ago, two months ago? And I said, I'm going to help you because I see your topic and I'm going to help you argue with me better. And I can tell looking at your topic that you're about to give me a fancy God of the gaps argument. And you promised you wouldn't and then you did. And (laughs) since then, every call has been a fancy, trying to get a fancier, works more God of the gaps argument. And it really bums me out that the first piece of advice is you're going to look stupid if you try and God's the gaps this. And since then, you've been like, it's all I'm going to try. And Mark, I genuinely enjoy talking to you. I've liked when you've called in. I've liked yeah. interacting you with in chat. But here's, so here's the question. You have a metaphysical hypothesis and you want to call it a hypothesis. I'm not even ready to grant you that. Because can you present how to falsify your metaphysical hypothesis? Oh, can, can I can I derail? Sure. I I, I want I want to keep. I definitely want Jimmy to be able to get his answer. It, here's where I think we've already hit hit a problem. Can you give me any piece of data that is best explained by appealing to an immaterial being who created the universe? What is the what name a single piece of data? that is best explained by pointing to an immaterial being who created the universe. Okay, and this is, this is very important to my argument. There is no singular piece of data. There is numerous I, I give up, I'm going to the bathroom, it's all yours, Jimmy. I genuinely no longer give a fuck. Mark, that's, if you're saying there's lots of data and it's numerous pieces of data, then yeah. you have to be able to give us the pieces and you're trying to suggest sure. that these independently, I guess, they only work if you put them all together, which isn't much of how anything works. And again, if you had a falsifiable hypothesis, somebody could, somebody could take that and notice it. it. The reason why it's God of the gaps is I don't have something else to put in there or I like this in there better than I don't know. So it, 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 are you trying to suggest that this is the grand unified theory is God? Because no scientist... Is going to agree with you on that. Uh, what is what are what is one piece of the data that you think collective is part of the collective that points to God exists? So, so uh, you, you, I'm glad you, you mentioned some of the things you, you, you did because they're the same things I kind of struggle with because I'm I'm trying to be intellectually honest and in yeah, how I, I, I look know at the you, issue. I know you believe that you have shown a clear bias every single time. Now we all have biases. And we all have things we want to be true. But in your intellectual, in your attempt to be intellectually honest that I, I believe you try to do, I don't think you've realized you've put up these walls that prevent you from doing so because the bias is coming super clearly through. So, so just give, but please just answer the question, one piece yeah, of so this let me data. Tell, let, me, let me tell you how I come to my beliefs. I'd rather answer my question. Views. I want to hear, because I already, I think I already have an assessment, and I, it will just take forever if we go. I want to know, no, no, you're no, saying it's, it's a combination of many points of data. What's one of the points correct. of data? One of the points of data is why there's anything at all. That's, why anything what's the data? Well, show me the data that resembles there being anything at all. What are you talking about? I literally, okay. I asked for a single piece of data which you dodged, then Jimmy gets you to finally present a single piece of data, and your piece of data is something exists. That is your piece of data. The fact that something exists no. rather than nothing is the piece of data that Not you think is isolation. best. I'm still talking. You think the fact that something exists is best explained by an immaterial being who created the universe. I'm, I'm sorry I even came back from the bathroom. Technically, he's saying if you add that to other data. So my the point I'm going to th- say you're saying, Mark, is every time we add a piece of data to something exists, we get closer to the hypothesis 
that it's God. So give me a second piece of data now on top of your something exists that now increases the likelihood it was God. The appearance of design, both biologically... No, because there is no appearance uh, of design. That is something you assert. That is not a point of data. Oh, that see, is that, an assertion. That I disagree with Jimmy on. There is an appearance of design, but the appearance of design uh, is design not evidence things. of actual design. My phone has the appearance of design. I don't think that's what Mark right. was referring to. No, no, I, 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 I actually agree with Matt on this, because I, I even think Dawkins has at one point described biology as the study of living things that have the appearance of, of being designed, but are, but which are not. It, so here's the thing. And you, was, you and Matt and Dawkins are all you're, you called this a point of data. And I'm sorry to say this. If we're agreeing that that's a point of data, all three of you are wrong because appearance is subjective. The three yeah. of you are subjectively saying it appears designed. No. Go ahead. Mark. Uh, so Matt. here's the thing. There is an appearance of design. That does not mean that there is design. Design needs to be demonstrated. I I only agree that things Correct. that which are designed appear designed. I don't I don't agree well, that well, snowflakes Jimmy, look Jimmy, designed, say, for example. Jimmy, are you saying that a rock and a a human being both appear the same from an ontological design perspective? I don't think either of them appear designed. Okay. Well, you know, when you look at things, the complexity of... I think what you said complex. That's to, fine. I think they both look complex. Design implies uh, uh, direction and decision. And I haven't thought humans look designed ever since I've understood how natural selection works. And I only thought they appeared designed before that because of religious indoctrination. I don't think I would have ever gotten there if I had stayed neutral. Okay. But you don't think the nanomachines that they've discovered inside cells have the appearance of design? No. They look like actual machines. No, I don't. Like the flagellum that has the motor and the rat and The fact all that those our things that we design resemble things in nature, and granted, we hadn't seen those miniature machines, but we had seen other things that also resemble them, doesn't, doesn't excite me remotely. Okay. But again, well, we're talking about points of data. And you're saying first point of data was God, or not God, there is something that doesn't imply a God. So you said, I said, give me the second point of data. And you said things appear designed. I disagree that that's a point of data. Maybe Matt doesn't disagree that that's a point but, of data. I, and, 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 wow. It doesn't matter, but I'm it doesn't actually, matter if it does. I, I, I'm not missing your point. Jimmy, Matt, I'm, I'm actually glad. I'm actually glad that you don't agree with us because that reinforces my argument, which is, Holy the, shit. Abductive arguments, abductive arguments, when you're making an inference to the best explanation. Mark, I don't give a fuck about abductive variation. arguments. Abductive arguments don't prove anything. If your entire, if everything that you ever do winds up with a really impressive abductive argument for God, you will still not have done fucking anything. You're, what what, what kind of fucking, no, no, no. Case. What kind of admission, what kind of admission of failure is it to say that the best argument anybody can ever make for a God is an abductive argument, which doesn't prove shit? I'm not saying that is the, what, this is what I wanted to explain from the start. Personally, I have, it's a properly basic belief for me that God exists. In the same Goodbye. Way Goodbye. Think, Goodbye. You if you're going to say it's a properly basic belief, then you're saying that it's a position that has no justification and that will not change. No, no. What I was saying is that's the step. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Can, Am I wrong? Am I, uh, Mark, Mark, which one of us is wrong about what a properly basic belief is? It, I'm, it's, I'm not saying it's, I might not change my opinion on it. I'm just well, saying which one am I example, which one of us is wrong about what a properly basic belief is properly basic beliefs are not based on other beliefs they are part of the foundations of right. a person's belief system which means they are not right. arrived at through through evidence or argument and how are they arrived how are they derived they're the foundations these are presuppositions but they could change somebody could change their beliefs um, okay, I'm not interested in arguing with you about what you think is properly basic, especially since I don't think there's any justified properly basic beliefs. 
Uh, right, and I understand that viewpoint. But I, all I was trying to explain was that the just personally, like that's my. I'm not saying that's a truth claim about the world. Just my personal autobiographical. I don't uh, give belief. a fuck, Mark. Why is this so difficult? I asked you for what God. Give me characteristics of God and show me what data it, it best explains. And you said I believe in a Creator God, and the and the thing it explains is creation. That is, li it's it's literally a summation I, listen, of what your position was. You believe in an in right. an immaterial Creator God, and the thing it explains is creation. No, what the reason I brought up the properly basic belief was because you said, is that your best? And I was trying to explain personally, that's why I believe. Now, if we're going to have Mark, a date or Mark, a if you say personally persuade, one more fucking time, I'm going to hang up. Do you have an evidence based argument for the existence of a God? Yes or no? Because if all you're going to do is call in to say, personally, I think it's a properly basic belief that because there's a creation that needs a creator. You, you sound, you know what it is, you sound almost as stupid as Ray Comfort, except you're not, not bright enough to recognize that that's how stupid it sounds. All right, man. Somewhere you learned that insulting people somehow scores points in debates, but it, it really doesn't in the real world. Uh, I, I don't uh, no, think no, 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 sir. No, sir, Mark. I'm not trying to score points in debates. I'm actually trying to actually have a conversation about whether or not a belief's justified. I don't have any well, interest at all in score. Shut the fuck up. I don't have okay. any interest at all in scoring points or caring what you think of this assessment. I keep arguing and pointing out fallacies and pointing out reason, and you keep twisting and turning like a twisting and turning thing as if someone should give a fuck what you think is properly basic. Do you have a way to demonstrate that believing in a God is rational or not? Uh, I, I do. I think it is rational, and I have cool. arguments to support demonstrate, that. My, my demonstrate, is, demonstrate a belief in God that is rational. Go for it. Okay. It's rational to believe in God because we, there's, we experience a, a morals. They appear to be objective, objective to us. Otherwise, they would have no objective foundation. There is also, and from a Christianity perspective, there's the life and the resurrection of Jesus. These there are all are, really bad examples uh, so far. Yeah, nothing you've presented and, is rational. Nothing you presented is a rational justification for believing in a God. Because first of all, we don't experience morals, and they're not necessarily objective in their origin. So you just made a bunch of assertions. You said basically you think it's rational to believe in God because that is what you accept as an explanation for morals. And yet there are those of us out there who have moral systems that are constructed without appealing to a God and without any need to appeal to a God. And there's not a single objection that you or anybody else can raise with regard to my moral system that is solved by appealing to a God. So now you don't understand rationality or morals at all. You also so said the life. I, I, I do, you said I it's rational because of the life and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Even if we can take every individual piece of that, it's not. You can't even demonstrate it's rational to believe in resurrection of anyone, let alone Jesus, or that it happened. Pro prove a resurrection happened. Mark, 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 I'll give you $1,000 right now if you can prove that Jesus of Nazareth was resurrected from the dead. I'm in for 1000 too. Okay. We know he existed. No, we don't. We no, we don't. Crucified. We absolutely no, do not we know don't. He From a historical We don't know any of that. We don't know any of that. No, That's sir. I would also retreat to no, behind sir, We I, don't know that. I would also but retreat to that. Even if he existed and was killed, that doesn't mean he was resurrected. By the way, a historical well, perspective and a historical fact, as they are treated, are distinctly different from facts and things that we know happened. The, the threshold to call something a historical fact is much lower than a scientific, well, you wouldn't call anything a scientific fact, but it's much lower of what we would usually use the word fact or say that something is a scientific theory. Uh, they, are, they are, you treat these things as though they are true with the knowledge that many of the things are going to be wrong. For example, uh, a lot of people believe a lot of stupid religious figures existed as historical facts. And it's only been recently that giant religious uh, institutions have gone, hey, our accepted historical fact that Moses existed, we're realizing that was a story, despite the fact that the historical consensus, therefore historical fact, 
recently was that he existed. Meanwhile, this conversation's over, and here's the reason why. When you assert that it is a, an historical fact that Jesus was resurrected, you're basically saying that Jimmy and I will not that? accept... I didn't say that. You kind of did. Shut your fucking pie hole, Mark. When you assert that it is a historical fact that Jesus was born, died, and this is leading up to your resurrection, because you can't demonstrate any of those either or the resurrection, you are suggesting that we are refusing to accept facts about reality. And the truth is, we are not refusing to accept facts about reality. You are taking facts and reaching a conclusion that isn't rationally justified. But you want to pretend that you are sitting there, oh, I'm the one with the facts on my side. No, sir, you don't have facts. You can't demonstrate that Jesus existed. You can't demonstrate that he was crucified. You can't demonstrate that he was resurrected. It's not possible, which is why we keep having these debates over and over and over again. But you think that it's rational to believe in a God because of the fact of a resurrection that you can't prove. You are multiplying your, your absurdity. You are, you are taking anecdotes and multiplying it against anecdotes, and the plural of anecdote doesn't, isn't data. How could you possibly it prove? Starts. How could you possibly prove that anyone, anyone in history, I, you don't have to go back 2,000 years, prove that anyone has been resurrected from the dead after dying, being buried, put into a tomb for a day and a half? What you could do, is, you cannot prove it scientifically, but what ah, you could okay, do thank is... You. Yeah, I, I'm not interested in your excuses, Mark. The only asked, sort of proof, the only, the, only, the, only, the only sort of proof is scientific. If someone was dead and then came back to life, that is a question of science. Period. Um, what I would say is that certain facts are discoverable through the scientific method if you have if you could set up the experiment when you're talking about historical events things that happened in the past you cannot put do, run these experiments in the same way that you could Correct. do other science and so Correct. we also can't say we Correct. know no, those no, 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 things no, no, no. happened so so mark what you're saying is there's a god right i i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to ask a series of yes or no questions and you just will stop when you say no you're convinced there's a God, correct? Correct. And Jesus was God incarnate and came down and took human form? Correct. And Jesus was crucified as a penalty for human sins? Correct. And Jesus was resurrected again a day and a half, even though we say like three days later. Um, and that resurrection, he then goes on to live and be God and, and at the right hand of the Father, correct? Correct. And that believing and accepting this is the key to, f to salvation within Christianity. Correct. And that this God is the all-knowing, all-wise creator of the universe. Correct. And he planned all this out ahead of time? Correct. But he decided to do it at a period in history where there would be no way for people in future generations to have a scientifically sound understanding of what actually happened. Correct. Then that God is the dumbest Roger thing the that's question? ever existed. Well, can I answer that God, the last question? That God, that God is an immoral and stupid being who has decided to set the foundations of Christianity on something that even you acknowledge cannot be demonstrated instead of doing it right fucking now in front of everyone and demonstrating the truth in a scientifically verifiable way. He decided to do it back before there was electric fucking light and any way to investigate it. And you think that this is a rational course of action to believe in a God that's this fucking stupid. I, no, I don't think he's stupid because I think the reason you have to look at the purpose behind why he did it that no, way. No, I don't. It, the, pur the purpose. What, 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 what's the purpose of doing he, it? What's the purpose of doing it at a time when we can't investigate it? 
to maximize the number of people who could freely come to choose and believe in him. It's not oh, to prove to you. Then, wait, then why did he do it in front of anybody? Is, why did he write it down? Why why were there any alleged witnesses? About, he could have he could have died right? for all of humanity's sin this, in a cave somewhere and written the book as a letter. And that would have meant more people would have had an opportunity to come to it by faith. And if faith is, is the test... Well, sorry, go ahead, Matt. This is an example of what religion does to an otherwise functional fucking mind. Because the truth is, <laughs> Mark is going to find any excuse he can to try to find it and make this reasonable. I just demonstrated that the God, if in fact it were important to believe something... God could have provided a scientifically verifiable miracle, which means he could have done it now. But also, Mark, the part that you skipped right past because you're too busy and too quick to look for an excuse for your fucking irrational beliefs, is that God could have done this 2,000 years ago and provided scientifically verifiable evidence at that time and at every moment from that time till now, correct? He could have done that, yeah. Yeah, he could have, but he didn't. So go fuck yourself with this thing about how it's going to reach the most people because it's not going to give anybody a rationally no. justified belief. Well, no was, more people, no not, more people have a rationally justified belief for him doing something in the stupidest way possible yeah. a couple thousand years ago than if he would have provided the rational belief back then and at every moment since then. You are you are grossly rationalizing your yeah. irrationality, Mark. It is embarrassingly stupid. Listen, it, the because I understand how it looks. I understand what you're saying. I understand how it looks. No, you that don't. Way, but no, you don't. Of course I do. You don't think I'm a rational. If you person? understood, then you would stop believing. Mark, we've got 17 minutes left on the show. I have one other theist waiting on the line. Two other atheists that we're probably not going to get to, but we'll try. Do you have are, something are you willing... that can appeal to the people who are here to go? If you could prove a god, I would believe in so, him. Yeah, yeah. The, the thing is, you've already admitted that God did it at a time and did not provide scientific justification, which he could have done, but decided not to. And your excuse was, this was what was needed to reach more people. But are you saying that no. more people wouldn't have been reached if there would have been an av a, a, a realistic scientific uh, presentation then? you saying that wouldn't reach more yeah, people? Not to, not are you to saying that wouldn't people. reach more people? It's not about reaching more people. It's, it's it was you have fucking to have 10 minutes ago, you liar. You fucking liar. No, it was no, to you I'm 10 minutes. Okay, now you're muted. It was to you just a few minutes ago when you had to come up with a fucking rationalization for why God stupidly did it 2,000 years ago and didn't provide a justification. Then, then your justification, which everybody heard and can go back and rewind, was that this was to reach many more people. Are you denying that you said that? I, what I said, I want to qualify it because what I said was. Did you say that? Reach people. Yes, but what I meant. Why was, did you say, say it if it's enough, not the reason? Be, can I explain? It's. Why it's did you say it if it's people. not the reason? I'm trying to explain to you. Why it's, did you say it if it wasn't choice. the reason? Why did you say it? it down our throat. Why did you say it if it wasn't the reason? I, I thought I was clear. Maybe I misspoke. I apologize if I did. What I'm Why did you say is, it is if that, it wasn't the reason? If the next words aren't out of, out of your mouth aren't, I lied, we're going to have a problem. I just said, I apologize if I misspoke. If the but next the, words the, out of your mouth aren't, I lied, we're going to have a problem. I didn't lie, Matt. Don't be ridiculous. You are a liar. Goodbye. You are a liar. I don't, I don't think I he actually no knows how to identify his own dishonesty because he's dishonest with himself. And he's still literally, again, the first thing I ever said to him when we first started talking was, don't do God of the gaps. It's going to look bad for you. And he says, I'm not here to do God of the gaps. And then, and I told him like, don't do this. That's an easy argument for me to hit. I gave him guidance on how to debate me and how to beat me, took none of it and just did God of the gaps. And now that was our seventh call, I think with Mark. Uh, and Mark still is doing God of the gaps. Yep. At the end of the day. Tell you what, it's much better if you say, I don't know why God would have done it that way than to say, no, 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 it was so that he could reach more people. Well, I can come up, I can trivially come up with a way to reach more people. Hey, somebody thinks I need to be put in an institution. Come on, bitch, bring it. Put me, lock me up. 
I had interpreted that as so more people would have the opportunity to accept without good reason, that he wanted to maximize the number of people who would accept it based on faith and not rationality. That's how I took it. I might have been giving him the benefit of the doubt and trying to give him a better argument than he was there to yeah, and, and then the next thing that goes down the, that line after that is, okay, why is it better for believe things for people to believe things based on faith? And if that's the case, then why are you sitting here trying to argue for evidence? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got Donovan. We got to run through these quicks. We've only got 14 minutes left, and then I've got to be on our end show. But we do have Donovan in Portland, uh, which the question confuses me a little bit. So if you can very briefly summarize, you're asking about a blatant disregard for Catholic boarding schools and the Indian children that have been killed. Uh, and I'm not familiar with this being blatantly disregarded. Uh, so Donovan, go ahead. Donovan, are you there? Oh, are you, hang on. Let me see if it's... Donovan, we should hear you now. Can you? Yeah. Can you hear me now? I do. Okay. Um, well, I was originally calling to make fun of a homeboy sh- fire shirt, but the last call he was cooking that dude like fucking chef boy or G. So I wasn't going to say, I'm not going to say anything at all. Thank you. Like, Thank you, Donovan. We do have to, in a while. we are pressed for time is all. But, I, I appreciate it, but we're pressed for time. Go ahead. Oh uh, man. This is helping you guys. What was that? He said know. something and hung up. But I didn't. You actually, whatever point you were trying to make in response to being asked to keep it prompt, whatever little shitty thing you said and then hanging up, uh, you broke out when you hung up. So I'm sorry, your little Drew shitty Harrison, point who says I'm wrong on this one, call in, Drew. Call I, in and prove me wrong. You, uh, right now, I'll there's a line this. open. I'll open it now. Uh, call in and prove me wrong, Drew. Or, or, or prove it on Wednesday. There you go. Prove it on Wednesday. Yeah, that's better because yeah, we we really are short on time. Because if you're going to say I'm fucking wrong, you're saying I'm wrong and Jimmy is correct. Drew, are you fucking watching the show from 45 minutes ago or something? I'm not sure what's going on. Yeah, I I have no fucking clue what's going on. Jimmy and I aren't even uh, agree disagreeing on this. The only thing we slightly disagreed on was the appearance of design. It wasn't as far apart as Mark was thinking was being accepted. And that Matt was on his side. Producer James, uh, oh, wait, wait, I, sorry. All, all the appearance of design means is that it's reasonable for a person in, to look at something and say, hey, this looks like it could have been designed. Let's figure out whether or not it was. That's, that's what the appearance of design means. And that exists all through the complexity of nature. It's uh, they call the anthropic principle. We've got Dave in Maryland, an atheist who wants to know about diagnosing a friend, I think. Go ahead, Dave. Hey, what's up, guys? What up? Um, so I had a coworker a while back um, who was religious, and uh, she displayed a lot of the symptoms of having religious OCD. And I'm, I'm not sure, like, if she had a therapist or anything. Uh, she had, like, a lot of auditory hallucinations, thinking that God was talking to her. And she had many other symptoms. Um I guess this is like an ethics question. Uh, is it my place to tell her that she might have like a mental illness or? No. Are you? I mean, are you her therapist who's treating her? No. No. Then no. I mean, it's it, it can be your place to to be a good friend and promote healthy activities and. If there's a way to suggest a person seek therapy without being a douchebag, because most people do it the douchey way, certainly you can go that route. But it is always unethical, despite the fact that, you know, I do it. I, I tease Matt when we're alone about certain things, but it's always unethical to s- actually say, I think this diagnosis of you, if you aren't the treating physician uh, uh, to do so. I know we break that sometimes, and I even support some, like, I've, I've obviously spoken of the narcissism of Donald Trump, but my my ability to diagnose Donald Trump as a narcissist is not. I don't actually have the qualifications or the means to do so. Well, okay. So is there like a way to like suggest maybe getting help or something along those lines? So here's the thing, like if I was if I was talking to somebody and I suspected this religious OCD thing, I, I wouldn't bring that up. I would just, that's what you had in the notes. I wouldn't bring that up. I would just do the way we do it here. And I'd be asking questions and see if a person can come to conclusions on their own that, oh, I have 
these beliefs that aren't well justified, what's my motivation for them? Uh, and then in their own time, if they're ready to have a suggestion from you because you are the person in their life who the suggestion of therapy can come from, that's when you do it. But unless we're talking about something that is neurotically harming other people and is in need of an intervention, in which case you need to be gathering the right people for an intervention, it might not even be you in that case either. Uh, unfortunately, there is the reality of the, you have to let people do shit on their own and come to their own conclusions. We do a call-in show, not a call-out show for this very reason. We're not finding the people who need to change. We're hoping the people who are ready to change come to us. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. Yep. All right, well, thanks, guys. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> Matt, did you have any thought on that? No, I, I'm talking with people in chat. See, this thing, thanks. they're like, oh, no, no, he was saying that more people would come to believe because of faith. At no point does providing good evidence mean that people can't still accept because of faith. Yeah. At no point was faith as an option for belief removed from anyone. It's a fucking lie. It's a lie. He's a lying liar who lies. Also, proof doesn't prevent people from not believing. Exhibit Correct. A, QAnon, uh, Exhibit B, anti-vaxxers. I mean, we it, could do yeah. this all day. It doesn't, it doesn't eliminate your free choice and it doesn't eliminate your justification. I can believe scientific facts for good reasons or I can take them on faith or I can disbelieve them no matter how much good evidence is there. The point here is that when I asked why God wouldn't provide evidence and he was like it would reach more people, then when I pointed out that there was a better way to reach more people, all of a sudden that answer changed. That makes him a liar. Keep arguing with me. Yeah. Uh, by the way... Uh, uh, to all the people who said in chat that they would match us dollar for dollar, some people were saying they'd give a couple thousand dollars if we if he was able to provide that proof. We didn't have to use, spend our money today. But one thing you could spend that money on is becoming a patron. And then tonight at 7 p.m. Uh, Central Time, you can do a Zoom with Matt and I. We're Zooming with all yeah. of our patrons. The link is down below. Use that money you were going to match. Let's use these last couple minutes to see if we can get through Daniel in Israel. Daniel, uh, you want to talk about discussing faith with theists from your university. I'm very sorry that you're the Hi. last call yeah. today. We're very pressed on time, so you're going to have to make this tweet. Yeah, length. I'll take that into account. Sure. C can you hear me well? Yeah. We're ready. Go. Go, go, go. Uh, awesome. Awesome. Amazing. So, uh, yeah, I really wanted to do a short promo. Just uh, It's really short. Just to say to Matt uh, that you've been with me through thick and thin, and I really appreciate uh, just your show and your work. Um, so basically, my uh, question is, I study in a semi-religious university. I mean, I have to take a few courses um, about the Jewish uh, tradition, uh, the Jewish Bible, so on and so forth. There are incredibly smart people, intelligent people who are studying with me, uh, who I had the pleasure of you know, meeting and uh, discussing with, and each conversation is very polite and it's nice, but I seem to notice a, so, a sort of pattern of just it falling back on, you know, it, it even popped up in your conversations here. Uh, people saying uh, that, first of all, uh, it's open for interpretation, uh, Something that is written, you know, changes uh, with the times. Uh, yeah, so Daniel, the, I'm, I'm only going to cut progresses. you off because we are so pressed for time and we have a couple of things to go over. Sure, if you want sure, more sure. of an answer, either call this Tuesday when I'm going to be on with Owen on hostility, that's Telltale, or call Matt on Wednesday. Uh, but the open to interpretation thing is wrong. It isn't subjective. It's not. It, there, a lot of people like to do this thing where they go. Uh, there's this. There's a meme that went around that theists used to use, where you have two people on on the opposite sides of a digit, and that digit appears to be a six or a nine. And one person says that's a six, and you're wrong. This is a six. And the other person says you're wrong. This is a nine. And then the the whole thing with the meme was like it's a matter of perspective. Except for that's wrong because somebody wrote the digit there. And it, there is a correct orientation for it. And so right now what you have to find is okay. who's in the right orientation. One of them is wrong and one's right. It is either a six or a nine, unless the intention was to draw something that was a six or a nine, in which case they're both wrong. 
Uh, and so the, it, I, I, I would just push back on the it's not open for interpretation or if it is open for interpretation, then we can't make any decisions on that because saying it's open means God doesn't care and we could, could take it anywhere. It's up to my subjective interpretation. Uh, and so it's either an argument not worth having or it's actually wrong and there is a correct answer. Whether or not you know Moses actually existed is true or false. It's not open to interpretation. Uh, and so seeking yeah, what that. the actual intentions of the writ written text, like the people who like to say that the in the beginning thing is actually a metaphor, it wasn't written as a metaphor and they are wrong and that's not open to interpretation. So uh, yeah. that's 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 what that's your only option there, Daniel, I'm afraid. As soon as somebody starts think, saying think, it, that it's about interpretation, then the issue becomes how do we tell whose interpretation is correct? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> that's that's exactly my, my train of thought. And uh, yeah. I, I just, I was stuck, I guess, uh, when the conversation reached that point, I was stuck because there's not really much to talk about if, if we're just going to leave it at that. But, you know, the, the question pops up, why do you believe then uh, if, if there's, not really any supporting evidence if there's uh if it's just open for interpretation oh, that's, that's not how i mean i'm a i study biology so you know a common common uh kind of uh thing with forest uh, i guess uh but sure. anyway uh yeah that's not how we work with uh, our Correct. scientific sure. research of a certain subject so yeah if you'd yeah, like to we'll expand answer. on it call either the two shows i suggested this week or call yeah, earlier yeah. in the show next sunday and we we can go over it more if you have specific examples but yeah i think the answer from both of us is for sure. the follow-up question is how do we determine which interpretation is right because it isn't open yeah Re reality isn't determined by interpretation exactly cool okay thank okay. you daniel I appreciate it so much guys I gotta, have a great uh evening you too Thanks, Daniel. Goodbye. Uh, I have two quick. I have two quick things for chat, and then you can wrap us up. Yeah. Uh, number one, from Mr. D and Smackdab. I'm sorry that this is really confusing for you, but the rules for what you can do in chat are different from the rules for what you can do on the show. If you call, if you're in chat and you harass the mods or you start saying negative things about the host or whatever else, the chat rules are such that they will put you in timeout and possibly ban you. If you want to call in and say that I'm an arrogant prick who you think needs to be institutionalized, we won't ban you in chat for saying that on the air. And yes, it's true. I don't have to follow the chat rules while I'm on the show. If I were in chat disobeying the chat rules, I could probably get away from that with that too, but I don't. So any of you who are really confused about why I can do something on the show that you can't do in chat, A, it's my show. Second of all, the rules for on the show are different from the rules in chat. Smack dab, it's not called hypocrisy. It's called two different arenas. You can, matter of fact, smack dab, I'm just going to fix you right now since hypocrisy is so difficult for you. You can call in, but you won't be chatting anymore. Yeah, I, I was going to say, anybody who thinks that the live chat is somehow open forum or should reflect uh, uh, something like freedom of speech and says something stupid like that, that ain't it. Fuck you. I worked my ass off and Matt worked his yeah. ass off to get that audience. That's our fucking audience. You don't get to just come and have a show with our audience on your terms. You get to have a show with our audience on our terms. You can call in. That's how you get access to the audience we are worked our fucking asses off to get. And speaking of which, you should hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. Uh, catch the and rest of the- you should not fuck with our mods. It's true, too. Catch the rest of the shows this week. They are going to be great. Forrest Valkai is back tomorrow on uh, uh, Skep Talk. I forgot the name of, my, of the show I launched just a month ago for a second there. Uh, Hostility will be myself and Owen Morgan of Telltale. We'll be specifically talking about cults, escaping cults, and the like, but obviously we take all manner of religious cause as well. Uh, this Wednesday is Matt back with Heathen Queen. Uh, and then Thursday's episode of Transatlantic call -in Show has been moved to Saturday. Uh, and Katie Montgomery will be hosting, oh man, Aaron, and I've forgotten Aaron's full name, but uh, a special guest from the UK uh, will be joining on Saturday's episode of Transatlantic. And I would expect, if I was you, some sort of special surprise pop-up show to happen either Thursday or Friday. But that's all I'm going to say, because I might 
back out on it. We will see everyone who comes to the patron Zoom call tonight. If you want to be a part of that, go join at any level on Patreon. Uh, the link is down below, patreon.com slash call the line. We now will leave you and anybody who wants to come to the RN Raw show, the stream will automatically redirect you there. It should. Uh, if it doesn't, come find RN Raw's channel. That's where I'll be reading the Book of Mormon. Matt, thanks for joining me today. Thank you, sir. Later, later. See you in a bit.